Welcome everyone to the town hall, the deep funding town hall. And for today, I will explain you a little bit more about what is deep funding, what is this town hall, why we are all here reunited at this hour. Then we have some updates from deep funding, which are pretty promising. Um, we have also um, a workshop by Andrea and also some updates uh, from the deep funding community itself. Let's start by defining uh, what is actually, you know, Singularity Net and deep funding for you to understand a little bit better. Deep funding is a decentralized grants program that is actually tasked um, with the responsibility of funding projects, initiatives that are actually beneficial to Singularity Net. And the mission of Singularity Net and what we are trying to achieve all together as a community is the creation of a democratic, decentralized and beneficial AGI. And with Deep funding, it's a pretty open ecosystem. Everyone can join us uh, and you're welcome if you're watching as a recording or if it's your first time, welcome. I hope you, you enjoy this here. It's full of great ideas and great people. But of course, we do have some values such that we try to, to respect and to follow, such as openness, creativity, collaboration, and kindness. Those are super important. So if you are up for that, if you share the same values, you're more than welcome here at any time. And very importantly, deep funding also carries a lot of opportunities because it is a community-run pro program. It's a community by you, whether you're an experienced member or a new member, can actually play a role in deep funding, a role with proposals, with ideas that can actually help Singularity Net and deep funding grow, as previously mentioned. You, if you hold the AGIX token that will now is now turning into the ASI token, you can vote and decide which projects are the best to make this mission come to life. You can review proposals, help the proposals improve what they are doing and come back stronger for next rounds. And you can also, of course, join us here, discuss uh, important topics, tell us how we can get better uh, in this town hall and be part of the discussion and the growth of deep funding. And finally, and very importantly, um, if you do well in these other roles, if you show your value, then we have the circles that are basically community members working together to run the deep funding program. We have different circles such as marketing, the focus group, focus on improving deep funding, or um, other circles such as this town hall circle itself. Basically, what matters about this town hall and about that this event is it's made for you. We want to basically hear the community to give you a chance to speak about the things you believe are important for the funding Singularity Net, to organize workshops such as Andrea is doing or any other kind of activities you want. This is the place. So if you have any idea, if you want to participate, just reach out here or in Mattermost. But um, if you're a new member, it's also a perfect place for you to turn on your camera, turn on your microphone and to ask questions, to start a deep funding journey and to understand what role you can play here. And finally, as we were saying, if you have anything you want to share with the community, maybe you completed a awarded project, you have some interesting progress in a milestone, you need feedback from the community, this is the place for you. You can come here and host something in the main tunnel, or if you prefer, you can also host a specific breakout room about a specific topic afterwards, um, whatever you want, whatever you want, as long as it's inside this uh, AGI, Singularity Net and Deep Funding community. And we'll have Andrea's workshop, but right now, first we have uh, updates from Rafael Preza about deep funding, right, Rafael? Yes, yes, thank you, thank you, Rafael Cardoso. We have to <laughs> to say our surnames, right? That's good. And yeah, very nice to have this overview uh, during the uh, town halls uh, at, at the beginning to put everyone at the same page on the same page. Uh, quite good to have. And for the first announcement, it's exactly about this. We are uh, announcing now. You are the first ones to hear that we are creating, already created, the events circle, which is led by Rafael Cardoso, Ayo, and also with support of Mayor Defy Victor. Uh, we are creating this new circle. It's uh, It came from the uh, market circle, 
because of the big, the great that uh, it has an impact in our operations as well. So the event circle is not going to be only dealing uh, with the town halls, hosting, editing, and etc. Uh, but also, uh, I'm sorry, no, editing is still with marketing. Juan Pablo is here exactly because of this, right, Juan Pablo? And thank you very much for doing this. <laughs> but uh, for doing the awareness around finding the right people to uh, come here, like Andrea, and give their uh, talk, and also to bring more and more uh, members like you and soon to be members. So one of the main goals of the town halls and other events that we are going to have is to increase our community with also quality, looking for the right persona uh, and stakeholders to join us. Okay, so thank you very much, Rafael, Ayo, Victor, to accepting the challenge. And uh, as far as I can see, it's been uh, a success already with very nice things happening. And with that, we also have a, a, the announcement of the creation of a new open meeting. It's the All Hands for Circles. As you know, the circles are, um, are made as we can call it from the, 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 the legacy uh, corporate uh, departments. We have the marketing circle, we have the review circle, we have, and as you know, and this is going to be the moment where the circles will give their uh, retrospective of the previous two weeks on decisions and what has been done and, and what, what they are up to. And later, you from the community will be able to engage and uh, discuss about these topics or anything new that you feel the urge to, to make. So it's very important to be part of this as well. It's more related to, I would say, even governance than the uh, regular uh, town halls that we have. And it's different. It's a different approach, even though we are using Zoom calls and etc. For that, we are uh, the, the town halls up to now, they were uh, weekly calls on Thursdays, if I'm not mistaken, 3 p.m. UTC, right? We are going to stick with that, but it's going to be bi-weekly now because in alternated uh, weeks, every other week, we are going to have the all, uh, all hands. Very important. We changed the time of the all hands. We didn't make uh, kept the the same time to not generate confusion. It's going to be Wednesdays at 1 p.m. UTC, right? No, sorry, 2 p.m. UTC. So this is the time that we are going to have. We are going to update the calendar with the ambassadors program and also our own. And soon, soon we are going to be releasing the community uh, website where we are going to be able to check everything that's going to happen uh, as events, which is going to be also a role for this new, uh, newly created circle, the event circle. Uh, they are going to update it uh, with the new information even for from the community, if deep if deep funding or SNET having a uh, if deep funding or SNET having events, it will be uh, shown in the community website, which guys here are going to keep updated. Okay, uh, so yes, please join us in this new. Uh, type of meeting. It's going to be exciting having you there and being more transparent and decentralized, uh, hearing from you, from the community on how we should uh, behave uh, or at least uh, uh, contributing with the decisions uh, from each circle and also for deep funding. Another announcement uh, is that we finally finished the calculation around the top contributors for round four extremely difficult, a lot of statistics, mathematics, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I would love to thank uh, Rojo, which did all the calculations and algorithm for that. And also uh, Mayor, which he was involved in supporting this uh, process, also reaching and bringing the necessary data to these contributors to be defined. Thank you very much. 
not only for the team, but also for the contributors, all of you. Even if you were not selected as the top contributor, you are going to, uh, thank you very much. I'm going to write a blog post explaining uh, how the calculation was made, who uh, were the, uh, the selected ones, and so on, so on, so on. So probably by uh, this weekend, perhaps beginning of the next week, uh, we are going to release the, the blog post for information, okay? Thank you. And yes, um, another, not an announcement, but an information. We are going to have now the workshop with Andrea. I have... I, I had a conversation, a talk, a very good meeting with Andrea this morning, my morning, uh, about the, the process that she is uh, handling. It's very good. I am really impressed and excited with this, uh, what's going to happen towards reputation. And it connects a lot with other initiatives that we are handling now. So we see now that everything Sometimes it seems that is the dispers, diapers um, processes, but they are getting together and connecting into only one. It's it's really beautiful to to see this happening in deep funding. So Andrea, thank you very much. I won't be participating in this workshop. Uh, it's not because I don't want. I really really want to, but I also want to give all of you from the community, our team, circle members, uh, voters, etc. The opportunity to speak freely, not that I would do something for you not to speak, but I want you to feel comfortable giving your uh, feedback in order for Andrea to, uh, well, do her work, okay? So, Rafael, thank you very much. Andrea, thank you very much as well for the workshop that you are going to deliver now. And, well, if any of you need me, I am in Mattermost, our official channel for communication. Okay. Thank you very much and see you soon. Thanks, Rafael. Thank you, Rafael. Awesome. Well, just uh, to clarify, and uh, Uvio, you want to say something? I, I just yeah, want to... I wanted to know if we will also be presenting um, our work today or that's going to be some other time. Could you do it next week, Rubio? Would that be possible? Just send me a message on Mattermost. I just sent you a message because Raphael told me you wanted to present something, but uh, did you saw? My not, not me. Not 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 me specifically. Uh, not um, it's, it's our circle, right? So, and yeah, I know yeah. Andy and all that. So yeah, I just wanted to get that clear. How how much time does it take? Uh, do you? Uh, do not specific, but yeah, I think there's already an agenda for today. So maybe yes, go around and then we'll have some conversation um, behind the scene. Yeah. Yes, if you can next week, that would be awesome. Uh, or or we, we, we can figure it out behind the scenes. Um, also, just to clarify, guys, tunnels will be every other week at the same time. Nothing will change here. And uh, for the DF all ends, it's a great process if you want to see what the circles have been doing, if you want to participate in the governance and what has been what has been done to run this this fund, deep funding. So it's open to everyone and we'll share more info um, on the socials, on Mattermost, Telegram and everything. Andrea, before we go to, to you, I have a request as well from Joanna just to share a community event she's leading. Mm -hmm. Joanna... Basically, from Fortrack, Fortrack uh, has been working on reputation as well. Andre and they created the algorithms for this round, and they are basically having um, a workshop, let's say, as well on the 16th of August. So basically, next Friday at 3:30 um, UTC. I'll share the details here in the chat for everyone to join, as well as the link. Um, yeah, I think it's super interesting. Go there. Yeah. And also, Ken, Rick, if you want to, to talk a little bit more about the workshop, give a little uh, introduction. That's perfect. Um, yeah, well, this this is part of our closeout report for the work we've done um, that led to supporting round four on, on the reputation work. Uh, and so we are looking forward, forward to, you know, uh, getting more input from the community with regards to how everything went and what suggestions are for the future plans so feel free to go save that call and show up because 
Yeah. I think it's really important the work that Full Track is doing here with reputation. Yeah, absolutely. Kenrick, do you want to say something else? I think the only other thing I'll say is I don't think she realized that that conflicts with the AGI conference. So I might suggest that she postpone it one week uh, because I know some people will be, I'm, I'm attending that and there may be other people attending that. So that might be a challenging day to do it, but we'll, okay. we'll clarify that. Awesome. Up updates on matter most for sure, right? Yep. Anyway. Yep. All right, Andrea, please, <laughs> it's awesome. your time to shine now. Thank you so much. And thank you guys for coming and giving us this time. The I love the fact that there's all this energy around reputation. Um, what I'm going to try and do today is I'm going to give everybody a super fast zooming out look or view of the project that we've been doing. And then I'm going to ask you to dive in and um, get your voice into the prioritization. Um, and we're going to be working a lot on Miro. So I'm going to send a link to the chat. Um, if folks can click that link. Um, and I have, let me share my screen and I'll show you, I have a little bit of a gathering exercise. Oh, hey, um, can you give me sharing capabilities? I fail. I think I might need to be co-host, but I see some folks in there. And what I wanna do is just for a warm up, if half people go ahead and make a couple of stickies. Can you check, Andrea, if it's yeah, working? Let me try now. Yes, looks great. Perfect. Okay, so welcome to Myra. Um, as I'm talking, what I would love folks to do is come in here and um, the up to the warm-ups area and make a sticky here with your handle and tell us your favorite fruit. Um, and just like make a big line of names and fruits as we're going along. Um, and as, as you guys are doing that, and what I'm going to use that for is one, it's just fun to see everybody like laid out here. And two, if you run into a blocker using Miro, or you want to learn something, then ask questions in the chat and we can help make sure that you guys are ready to contribute later on in the, in the workshop. So um, the, the project that we are working on, the point of the project is to, as we go forward and we start building a great system for using reputation to strengthen the deep funding process, um, we are writing an RFP um, that describes the needs, the prioritized needs of, of the specific reputation elements, what those should be and where we should be using them. So we're very much in here playing in the layer between the very abstract process and the very detailed um, mathematics and algorithms. <clears throat> so we're trying to get fill in that gap. The And the way that we handled it, we have run basically like three workshops. I think this is the fourth workshop um, where we've finished our milestone one. We're getting into milestone two. Um, the first workshop, we pulled folks together and said, okay, let's talk about the deep funding process, and then let's talk about the pain points. Now, what really hurts? You know, where are you running into issues? Where was it slowing things down? Where you were that wasn't successful? And then we took the sort of the four biggest pain points and we unpacked it. Why? Why do you think that happens? Why is this happening? Why is that happening? So we really want, this was our pain storm. What are the basic pains? The next workshop that we did was we took those four big pain points and we said, okay, for each of these pain points, what are the types of reputation that we could use to solve that pain point? And how would we use that type? So I'm thinking in terms of um, creating reputation elements, that combination of what's the type of reputation that we we're going to collect data on and how are we, how would we use that in our process and how would that algorithm get out its sort of output. Um, we came in with some different reputation types like expertise, reliability, you know, context, how embedded in the community are there, social capital, like how much influence. Um, but the team also added some other types, things like self-interest. Um, is that reputation? Is it just a flag? It's interesting. Something about in good standing, the difference between reliability is like, oh, 
good stuff. Or like, yeah, they, they do okay, but they struggle. And then there's the people who like, you don't really trust. You think that they're not um, being acting in good faith in the community. And so that's a, a harsher one. Um, so we, we brainstormed, we thought about that, and we did this work of defining and brainstorming the different types of reputation elements that could be used. Um, and then what we're doing today is we've laid out the process um, that's in deep funding, sort of the, these five steps from zero to four. Um, we've put in descriptions of the different reputation elements that people have proposed against each of these steps in the process. Um, and what we would like to do is rank those proposals on four different goals, four different benefits. Um, we will use this, we'll step away. We're not asking you guys to do a bunch of like algorithmic voting up and down, but I wanna get a sense of um, which one of these elements do you think will be more powerful in this dimension or that one? We will go back and think about what how these different dimensions should be rated, but we want the community voice in like how, valuable you see these different el reputation elements. Um, we're, we want to do this prioritization because we're going to dig into, and not all of these elements, but a few of them pretty deeply and how they should work. Okay. The, um, yes, Io, thank you so much. Um, if you can serve as somebody who's on mobile, that would be great. Myro is lousy on, on mobile. You really need the big screen. And thank you guys. Okay, Drea, Raphael, Vasu, Lilu, Lilu, yay, and Ayo. It's great to have you guys in here. Um, I'm going to start sort of walking through and describing the elements to folks, but I wanna pause here. Does anybody have sort of questions about the goals or the process or what we went through? No questions yet. Okay, Raphael, my request, if you can, if people put hands up and I'm like really zo zoomed in and focused on talking, <clears throat> can you interrupt me and let me know if somebody has a question or if they have their hands raised? That would be yes. awesome. Yes, cool. of Thank course. You. Right now, everyone seems to be Everybody's quiet. Clear. Just yeah. listening, here's what's going on. Yeah. Okay, um, so let me take a, about 10 minutes, walk through the process and the, and the different reputation elements that we heard about. Um, the, the, first, the first step in the process, honestly, is behind the scenes, is that sort of step, phase zero is preparing the round. Um, the, this is the defining the framework. For this round, what are the rules? What are the eligibility criteria? What are the different pools? Um, we need to, what circles do we have to collect? Who are the kind of, a, um, evaluators that we need to, to have on for, uh, on board and you sort of publicizing, okay, you guys, we're gonna get started on a round and this is how it's gonna be set up. A bunch of work happens there. Phase one is collecting the proposals. You guys know this when it's like open up, okay, you can start submitting proposals. Um, the And people submit proposals and then they're assessed for eligibility. Are you meeting the criteria of this round? Um, the one of the issues, the pain points that came out that really hits in the review phase and the voting phase is there are too many proposals. There's a lot of noise in the proposals and that makes it hard both for savvy people in the community and especially for the people who are in the expert rating circles to handle all of that. Um, the And there's also a feel that there's vote farming and grant farming going on. So two, some of the um, reputation elements that people proposed using would be in this collecting phase where we for eligibility, sort of at more of a gate. Um, the first one is in general, um, all of this reputation requires on a level of civil proof um, tools. So this having a, an identity mechanism um, out there so that people proposals come from teams where the people on the teams have um, a, a, an identity mechanism that's in a system that, that SNET can read. 
Um, and we're being, because this is a requirement document, we're being ab ag like agnostic about what that tool is, obviously, but I've heard that there is a couple of decentralized identity tools that SNET is interested in using. So one, you can't submit a proposal without saying, this is me. Um, the next one is, hey, you need to be in good standing. Um, the, there is probably something along the, the most, the immediate description for good standing that people heard is if you are, have submitted a grant, you were awarded a grant, sorry, you submitted a proposal, you were awarded a grant and it had four milestones and you finished one of them and then you didn't show up after that, gone, did not respond. And we couldn't, haven't talked to you. We don't know what's happening. And you just ghosted. That's not in good standing. Um, that was a pain point that a lot of people were really frustrated with. So one, proposals from team leads who've had prior uncompleted projects um, are not eligible for this round. Um, another one is the is also a process of, of filter and sort of the, as part of the eligibility, in order to have the effective reputation at the, at the end, you really have to be able to assess the milestones. Um, it's, one of the frustrations that came out, we heard a lot is again, it's really hard to evaluate milestones because people put milestones into proposals that are not, are too vague. You know, you don't know how to measure that. You don't know how to assess that. We don't know who would assess it. Um, so one of the criteria here is um, making the proposals with unclear milestones are not eligible for, for this round. Um, a lot of what we expect in this round, um, and Raphael mentioned this is is we're this is a cyclical thing. You can get tagged and say like, yeah, wait a second, this isn't meeting our eligibility criteria. You back, you go back, you fix it, you come back, and that's fine. So in the submission round, this is assumed to be still in draft form, and anybody who passes the the process um, is then it turns into not draft final. Okay, so that's phase one. It's really about like who gets to be which proposals get to be in this round. Um, second round is review. And this is, it comprises community comments. So the community is reviewing. Um, a lot of comments, it's really valuable, but also in a, a lot of noise. Um, the, and then the other part you get is expert ratings. So um, Raphael and the team pull together experts in different areas. They have circles and they're reviewing and they're tasked with reviewing a, a lot of, many of the proposals. And so part of the goal in this phase is to give them a limited set of things to review. Um, let's focus on the important ones, not have to deal with all of the noise. So um, reputation elements that we saw in here, um, focusing on the proposals from teams that already have a high reliability score. Um, they So they have high reliability for completing projects successfully, and those are ranked higher, both for commenting in the community and commenting in the expert circles. Um, another, um, so that is what are you going to comment on? Um, the other thing that you're talking about doing is having less noise in the in the comments. How much, what comments should we focus on? There's going to be, there is a lot of noise in the comments. We want to elevate the ones that are more likely to be useful. Um, so two elements that people proposed in there is, look, we really want to be able to pull out comments from members who are deeply embedded in the team, who are active in, in SingularityNet, who participate in SingularityNet, who other people in SingularityNet work with, right? So this is engagement, but engagement with muscles on it. So it's like you're, you contribute and then people respond and like that contribution. So this, that's in, in context rather than just engagement. Um, the, and then as people proposed self-interest, right? Hey, I'm more interested in the comments. I'm not interested in the comments of people commenting on their own proposals. I'm interested in people's comments from other proposals. Um, the, a couple others that we saw is, hey, you know what? Maybe this needs to be a bit more of a gate. Um, the, if we have actually really expert folks who are doing these reviews, then part of that ranking of the rating of the different proposals, if something falls below a certain level, they need to not be in the voting round, right? Because it's hard to do all of the voting. Sorry, it's hard to do all the reviewing. It's hard to do all the voting. And the rating, the work that you do when you're reviewing is not showing up in the vote results. Um, 
Along with that, however, you also have to balance again with self-interest, right? If you, you can't be an expert reviewer on your own project or a competing project, um, even though you might have the expertise that you would comment on and review and rate other projects in the area. So that's the kind of elements people suggested for the reviewing pays. Um, for voting and allocation, um, this was less about ranking things in the work that is done in the reviewing and more about the weight of the vote. So how do we weight the votes that people um, do in their voting phase? Um, the first one that people really wanted to see is expertise, right? This is a complex, deep space. Like AGI and ASI, is some, there are people who know a lot about it and there are people who are like, I don't know, it's like me, I'm, I wouldn't have that much expertise. Um, especially for the rounds that are around specific topics or RFPs, um, we want voters with high expertise in these specific domains or in the domain in general to have a higher weight. Um, the next one is again context. Um, we're not looking for to support a lot of like noise and farming of who, who's voting. You know, like oh hey, take some some like AGIX and vote for the, my proposal on Singularity Net. Um, we want the people who are actually embedded in the community, the folks like you who are who are doing the work, to have a higher voice. Um, so they would have a higher weight. Um, there's also some discussion around this desire for identifying alignment, right? Who are the folks who are most aligned with the mission, you know, and and how do we give their votes higher weight? There was a lot of back and forth around this, so I think there was we wanted to leave it in, but I think that if this comes out as a very high priority um, reputation element, that we're going to have to unpack that quite a bit. And then finally, um, there's the the phase four, when you the deliverables are, are being turned in and you're, uh, the people are being evaluated on the deliverables and then the final project. You know, how much impact on the mission did this project actually have? Um, most of the work in this phase in, is collecting the reputation data. You know, are you, do we still believe that you're in good standing? Was your work reliable? Was it really good? Like, like assessing this, like, how not not just like we did you complete it, but how powerful was the effect? Um, and also just like we're looking for people to be evaluators. You know, we want them to develop a reputation as an evaluator and to be able to use that both in expertise and in reviewing. Um, and then the other expectation in here is that the people who would evaluate milestones and projects would be the people who have expertise in those domains in that area. So that's the big map of the process and the reputation elements that we're going to be working with today. That was a word dump. Um, I am absolutely going to cut pause here before we get to the next step, because what I'm going to ask you guys to do is to use these elements down here um, and rank them. So which means if you have questions about the different kinds of the reputation elements, we should make sure that they're answered now. Any questions from folks? And one of the other things that folks can do, um, if you have like questions about this, well, I don't know, it worries me, what about this? One of the things we've been doing is we've been gathering feedback. Um, I will stick a golden sticky up here. If you want to take that golden sticky, write something in it and, and like make a copy and put it against the thing that you have a question about, I would love to have those kind of, of comments now rather than when it's too late. So ask me questions here out loud, go ahead and ask questions or put in comments in the Miro, either of those is great. So I, I can ask you a question, I guess, Andrea. Uh, yes, so you have here the, um, so if you look at the first part where you have civil proof and eligibility, in mm -hmm. good standing, that first block. So that's kind of looking for ways to control the quality of the proposals that get in, or um, that that's the idea basically, right? With it's, all these options. Yeah, it it's to remove, not rather than just having, oh, look, sorry guys, we can only take 50 proposals. It's saying, let's take out the noise. 
Let's take out the high risk proposals and not spend our energy on those. So it was a way of reducing the number because one of the key pain points they had is there's too many proposals to review, too many proposals to vote for. Let's reduce the number, but reduce the number in a way that we feel like is makes a difference. Okay, okay. And these are already some suggestions that were created from your work so far, right? Yeah, yeah. We did a lot of that in, in the second and third workshops. Okay. Almost okay. in the second workshop. Kenrick, as his end up, please, Kenrick, go ahead. You're muted. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah, so one of the things I'd like to let the community know is, is that, I, you know, it is true that it's difficult to evaluate all the proposals. And that's been a concern that I've communicated both in Singularity Net and the Cardano community. But there is also an improvement to the voting system that we're working on that addresses that issue in a very elegant way. Um, so Singularity Net already uses square the square root of the wallets, but that is not actually what's called quadratic voting. Uh, the, the actual quadratic voting technique has to do with expressing the strength of your preferences about a proposal. So we use grades right now, right? Everybody, everybody grades the proposals, but everybody's coin weight is applied to all of those grades. Um, we are currently doing a simulation study and we'll be providing our third report uh, this week where instead your coins would be applied to di different proposals and like if you didn't care about a proposal or you weren't knowledgeable about it you would just put zero coins on that, that particular proposal and then if there was a proposal you liked a lot you would you know put your coins on that proposal, but it would then you take the square root. Or if you didn't like a proposal, you might put a negative sentiment and apply your coins to that negative sentiment. Um, and in that way, it, it sort of gives you the ability to self filter the noise while still allowing everyone, there's still allowing lots of proposals to be evaluated because now you're, letting the community to decide which ones they're interested in. So the, and, that ends up, that's a system where um, the voting, you need to, you, you can really just pay attention to the ones you know you already care about and you can sort of ignore the ones that are not inside of your, your sort yeah. of like area that you're, you're focusing on. Okay. Yeah. Right. I think yeah. the, one of the things that's really useful and one of the reasons we wanted to do this prioritization here is, you know, we're hearing the pain points. Some of these can be solved in non-reputation ways and some of them are going to need reputation for them and not. Yeah. So that's yeah. absolutely the kind of stuff input that I'd love to get here is, you know, for the different like goals that you guys have, what's the, which ones, really, which reputation would actually make a difference as opposed to, Hey, there's other tools to work to, to do it. Right. Right. The, uh, Absolutely. Cool. Any other? Open questions. Yeah, one of the things that was nice about this is I've, I've like in in going back and forth with with Raphael is, is like spotting which things are, are unlikely to be problems in the future and which things are still going to be a problem in the future. And that'll be a good thing that we'll keep me an eye on. Not seeing other questions. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lead us into the work that I'm going to make you guys do. Do I have my like, hey, I have my folks up here. Africa's. I really love lychees actually. I put mango, but I love lychees also. Um, the let me talk about this exercise. So like I like I said, our next step is we want to pick our top 
um, reputation elements. We have a long backlog here. We know that we don't want to build all of them. And we certainly don't want to build all of them first, right? That that as the people who are building this, the systems for this, both the input and the algorithm and the output systems, we sh we need to give them the most important stuff to work on first, see how that goes, measure the, act, the impact, um, and then go to the next one as we need. So this is really about development priori prioritization. Um, we could just all vote like we all do, quadratic voting on the different, like, here's all your coins and you could spend it on the reputation things, but I wanted to use this community voice to unpack a little bit more about it. So I'm looking at four different dimensions here. Um, sometimes I'll do like a two by two priority matrix. It's a little squishy. Sometimes I do other things, but for this one, but I really, I wanna get the subtle distinctions out here. Um, and I pulled this out of sort of synthesizing the desires, the goals, the benefits that people were looking for in this deep funding process. Um, the first goal that people described is, look, we really want the proposals that we fund to successfully impact the mission, right? So we want the process to pick those projects that are have a big impact and are likely to succeed. So that's one. Um, we want the time that we spend as a community on this work to be productive. We don't want to be wasting our time on this. Um, the we we're willing to put in the work, but we want it to make a difference and be something useful. The third goal is. In general, there's a concern that there's a lot of people who don't vote or don't review. And that's because the total burden on the community is pretty high right now. And we'd like to reduce that burden on the community. So which of these out reputation elements would reduce the burden on the community? And then the fourth goal um, is, okay, we're doing a lot of stuff here to reduce the noise, but we don't wanna set up barriers to the really new and interesting proposals. So we wanna make sure that this reputation system allows the new folks to, to come in and teach us something. So those were the, the four sort of goals that I, I heard in, in our workshops. Um, and I would like you guys to go and for each one of those, um, take these, take one of these things and move it around. Okay, wait a second. I think the best thing that would um, impact getting the best, most impactful um, proposals funded is um, I think expertise and vote weight is the thing that's gonna make the biggest difference. So I'm gonna take that and move it up. Sorry, I'm zooming around and I apologize about that. Um, if I were you, I would pick like a zoom level. This is pretty good where you can both read and move. Um, and I'm gonna move it up here on this side. And then I'm gonna take something else. Uh, what's this? This is context in like vote weight for the people who are in the community versus out of the community. I'm gonna say it's sort of moderate here, but maybe something, and this is down here in the noise, right? Okay, so that's the exercise I want you guys to do, and which means people are gonna be moving things around and, and, and pushing stuff. I'm gonna be watching about how these things get moved around. I'm especially gonna be interested in seeing if different people have a different opinions about the different, um, about the positions on the different areas. Um, but this is a fun thing. I'd love to have folks dive in, start moving things around, showing us your opinion. Um, but any questions about this activity and how it works? Yeah, I have a question, I guess. So like, so we should move just the same stickers, right? So what happens if I move it to one place, then someone moves it to another, and then uh, someone to the other? How's that? How's that? I'm going to be, that's that's what I'm watching for, and I'm going to when I start seeing that happen, I'm going to say, "Hey, you guys, you know, visiting innovator is like has a very different opinion than Walter does about this thing." Okay. Okay. Yeah. It'll happen less than you think it will. Um, and the idea here is that these, you, you guys can move these, don't copy, just move them. Um, and you have a set for each of the dimensions.
One of the things that's going to help, by the way, um, I think I saw visiting Myronier put civil proof eligibility on the left hand side um, of that dimension. Go ahead and move it over to the right hand side just to say, oh, this is something that's been placed as opposed to it was awesome. It was there accidentally. I'm seeing here that I put the detailed descriptions of these things too far away. Everybody's having to go up and say, what does this one mean? Lesson for me for the next, for our write up actually. Hey, Walter, did you change one of those? Or are you adding a new one? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Dre, Dre, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Now I can hear you. Okay, I'm on the headset. Yeah, the term you were looking for is consistency, not reliability. Okay, so reliability and rating? Well, no, it's <laughs> consistency. It's reliability is when somebody shows up on time. Uh, consistency is when the distribution uh, of the ratings uh, is not just arbitrary, you know, not ran not random, but consistent. Which element did you change? Uh, the right here. The... No, what was it originally? It was oh, reliability. Context? It was reliability and rating. And uh, uh, so, so it's like if somebody says, I'm going to rate everything and they do, that's reliability. Yeah. yeah I think you yeah. are looking for, uh, you know, that these are not arbitrary, but the person. So mm -hmm. You're calling out that I labeled this really badly because I no, was not, not badly, it just... because because that that um, that element didn't mean what you think it meant. meant. Oh, OK. Um, what that element was, and I'm going to do this, I'm going to undo, let's see if I can. Um, that element was, um, so it was, rely so this was, um, reliability determines priority and rating. Um, so the answer here is I can't do the little short names. I just use like the bl light blue things with the, the, the details. So 
Um, the So the idea here is if you reliably get work done, if you have had funded proposals and you did and your funded proposal was successful in the last round, then your proposal in this next round should be in a higher priority for rating. So this isn't a matter of how good you are at rating or how consistent you are at rating. It's what should you what should the community bother rating? Does that make sense? And thank you for calling me out. So I'm going to go up there and make a note. Yeah, that's it. Does make sense? Uh, where can I add the information that a number of people couldn't complete these milestones of proposals? Uh, as far as the integration with the marketplace and you know there were bugs delays and releases right. uh, and right. so on so to me it's um you i would we, love we need to treat those as a separate case and some proposals like marketing and ideations do not have that stage typically so, so indeed, i would i would love it here if you can um follow me let's see if i can go ahead and find in myro um that's a yeah but comment and that's the kind of feedback on this i would love to capture here so i would put it here in reliability and work if you say like but, but the ui makes it look like you didn't finish does that make sense If you can edit there and Walter, I might just yank you right to my view. So is that okay? Ready? Yes, please. Oh, no, I jumped to your view, but so <laughs> <laughs> I see you, but come up to the, come up and to the right. Okay. Uh, the right. Yeah. The point is that there is a category of milestones that has this special property that we need and other to categories may not have judge it. Um, yeah. I love the grouping that I'm seeing here. Somebody definitely came in here for new and interesting things and just like, boom, stacked them. If you think that you should feel free to say like, this makes a big difference and this makes, these two are a little bit different and not that different. So for example, I could say context in vote weight would help a little bit. Expertise helps a lot. So the distance on this dimension, I am paying attention to. Um, but I love having these rated high in general. These are things we should use to, um, to make sure that the new proposals coming in are still interesting. That's great. The so Raphael, I promised to keep an eye on people who are moving folks or other things around and I got distracted. So I'm not sure I can see all of that, but I'll try to. Um, I do have a question on one of them. Somebody ranked competitive interest in expert reviews very high on um, this is the way to get funded proposals, fund the proposals that have a significant impact and a successful impact. Um, does anyone want to talk a little bit to why that feels so critical? Because I think people that people expected that to solve other goals, solve for other benefits. Mm 
no voice. If you're talking, you're on mute. I mean, uh, maybe they uh, they think it's an interesting feature. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, oh, I I'm think, sure they uh, it definitely sounds like they think it's an interesting feature. I was wondering if somebody could talk about what's interesting about it. What do they like about that? How do they? Uh, how do they? Being used? Yeah. It's, personally, it seems like something that makes sense, right? Uh, but in terms of impact, I don't know how big it would be. But it seems like. Um, you know, I guess makes sense for someone competing in the same category to not be reviewing that proposal. I think that's what it meant, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that because the, yeah, so because the, of the that, incentives, I guess. That, yeah, that the concern here is that you end up with um, proposals that would have been successful being unfunded, or proposals that would not be successful being funded because you have this the way that the reviewers are, are playing out. Okay. Yeah, I guess, especially if you have uh, the expert reviewers, maybe, and people are, I don't, th I think from the last deep funding, it seems like people are still voting what they think is best, regardless of expert okay. reviewers. Um, or, but the, if you have the expert reviewers uh, putting a, a certain proposal very high and another very low, uh, that's, and people actually follow that, yeah. then it it could be very negative or yeah you could have a as you said a very good proposal that was not approved yeah. for some reason maybe they don't like that person or whatever and you have a, a another one that's not ideal but yeah let's see now that my arrows aren't going to be doing helpful here it's interesting because one of the suggestions here was basically right now there's no gating between the reviews and the voting. And so one of the pain points is I do all of this work and I do all these reviews and then people just, you know, shill their proposal and that's what gets voted for. Um, one of the possibilities is we say, no, there's a gate, that one of the phases is there's expert review. And if the experts look at a proposal and say, no, this is not a proposal that's worth voting on, that it would actually be gated out, that it wouldn't be allowed into the voting round. I think what I'm hearing here is maybe that's an interesting idea, but if you did it, you would absolutely need to make sure that that expert was not rating a competitive proposal because then it would be very vulnerable to, to gaming. Well, it's yeah. actually kind of the other way around is that you're effectively inviting Sybil, you know, you create incentives for Sybil accounts. And uh, that I think is a bigger problem. Because uh, then that's it's a fundamental extra... problem across hmm? yeah. the, the Sybil resistance is an issue across all reputation systems. Well, we'll if, if you how... don't, if you don't create penalties, uh, then there is no reason. If you have identity, people will see if there is clear identity on all the participants of the proposal and on all the comments yeah. and voting, mm -hmm. then you can see what people do. Uh, you know, it, it actually is very effective to, you know, if you can... Uh, you know, people basically do act very differently if they think they can. They're doing it anonymously. Mm -hmm. We we know we know that that is an issue. The other thing, the uh, so the other approach is to think in terms of reputation as being like coins, like tokens, right? So if we use token weighting to be civil resistant, um, we don't care how many wallets are voting. We just care how many tokens were voted for this. Um, if you have a certain amount of reputation and you have to, in, you can't duplicate that reputation, you can only split it across your wallets. 
um, then that's another mechanism for some civil resistance. Um, I don't know if we're thinking about getting that complex, but it is one of those topics that came up. Um, but so I definitely basically, got we somehow accumulate reputation per individual, mm -hmm. uh, we vote as individuals as far as comments or expert ratings, but then tokens are, you know, somehow quadratically adjusted. So there is a mismatch there that basically we do one person one opinion everywhere else except for counting tokens yeah yeah exactly and so when you earn that so I'll, I'll i think we will need in our rfp to pay attention to the mismatch what happens in the transition if in one space we're working like this as individuals in this space we are um we're based sort of to at the token level then we need to make sure that the transition is not ugly and and vulnerable Okay, awesome. I'm seeing a bunch of things laid out on our dimensions. Um, a lot of folks left things like I'm, I don't even think this is going to be useful. So you guys left it down there and to the to the left, and then the ones that you thought also, would be useful in this space. Yeah. Andrea, you have in the chat here. You have a, a comment from Vazu that is saying reputation is earned, right. not bought. Right. Um, uh, the right, which means that if you're going to spread the reputation, or as soon as you can move reputation from one wallet to another wallet, you can, you can buy, buy it. it. Right, exactly. Um, the so I think that's yeah. I, th I think none of this these reputation systems are going to work until you until or unless you're saying like, hey, we have a decentralized identity system. We know who we're working. These things are sold out. Um, they they can't be traded, and I hear you. Um, and Juana probably is asking, can reputation be split between the wallets? I think that that's really true. Yeah. Um, this this was one of the ideas that was bouncing around, so I wanted to sort of like like, like pop it out there, see what the reaction is. I think that point of as soon as you can transfer it, it's going to be purchased, um, is is all true, is all very true. Are folks still working? Um, actually, do me a favor. If folks can go ahead and raise their hand in, um, in, the, in Zoom and say that you're all done. I think we have three people already done. Yeah. Lilu set. Um, and Walter said, that's great. Thank you. Okay. I'm great. I have my stuff laid out. I can make use of this. I will, I will run and we'll start folding this into the prioritization process, um, for these, the, just sort of comparing, like, what are the things that are showing up across all the dimensions? Which dimensions do we the, think are, do we want to weight more heavily than others? Um, but that set, and actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock this now because, I need to lock these things. Boom. I have the power on this board. Um, so now that they're locked, the um, feedback or comments, do folks have things that made them feel, oh, this is super interesting, or I'm really uncomfortable with this? Um, then any sort of worries. Lilu, I'd love to have your voice in here, because I know that you are like, this is a, a different from when you, you you were involved in the first workshop. I'd love to hear like if this is what you were envisioning coming out. Also, Walter has his end up. I think you might want to speak. Walter, is that Walter? saying you're done or do you have a question? That was a hand done. Done. Okay, cool. That's what I thought. Yeah. Feedback, comments, what's working, what's not. Um, I can speak. Uh, I think this is pretty cool to try to um, like have these like dimensions because like you said, like finding those things that go across the board are going to be like beneficial for the process. So I think doing something like this actually is really good and that um, more people in the community should actually vote on this kind of stuff so we can 
collect the those common uh, thoughts on uh, this whole evaluation process or the deep fund uh, the yeah you know what I'm talking about but sorry my brain's dying um, <laughs> um, yeah no I I I found I I thought I think this one was really interesting especially to do it with people at the same time so I think I think that was really cool um, yeah. I like having the, this is very much a qualitative, but a little bit scaled. Um, we have some other, I have some other techniques that I sometimes I'll like send out a survey and then have things come back, but I really have to have like seen how people are interpreting things and seeing the conversation first before I'll do something at that scale. So this is a nice, a nice blend. The, uh, cool. Thank you. And thank you for the vote. And one of the things on the dimensions, by the way, is one of the things I want to look for is I think that we should try and look for ways of measuring these goals you know are we getting better you know can we measure the total burden on the community How, uh, and now over from round to round can we start pulling that down um the because that should be part of the goal of the um of the the reputation elements um you can go ahead use it for a while at some point it's going to get gamed and Goodhart's log is going to come in and, and mess it all up but start with some metrics and then swap the metrics when we stop trusting them um, yeah, Walter, now you have a question. Tell me. Right. Not, not so much a question, but um, in terms of the populations, so the experts is a sep separate population from people leaving comments. Um, I think we've selected like maybe a dozen experts of who, and I don't know how many participated mostly. Uh, now the population of the token holders uh, is much larger, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, what was it? What, was it mentioned like 140 uh, unique wallets, something like that? Uh, uh, Kendrick would know they counted yeah. them. And uh, if you look at the actual token votes per proposal, they center around like mid to high 30s with the, you know, so that many people left a token vote and the and, range and is we, between, between we 20 to get and more 50. Of those people. Yeah, I'm going to hire so, of that. So basically you can kind of see that a large fraction of doing token voting only voted partially, mm -hmm. you know, some proposals. So I think people take voting, you know, interpreted differently that so, some like myself vote on everything to mark some up and some down. Others, I think, only vote on the ones that they think are good, or at least that's my interpretation of how they select like a, a quarter or 10% of all to leave a vote on yeah, yeah and, and i think that that also goes to kenrick's um comment about there's reputation as a mechanism that you can use but there's also the voting process and the ui itself and those are two independent tools um the and we should treat them independently which is exactly right um the so so it, maybe what we need to do is we need to have a system where you don't have to vote on everything that it's just like, hey, I've got my budget. I'm going to divide my dollar across the whole space of proposals, and I'm going to pay attention to the ones I, I care about. Um, as to the point about like there's experts, there's commenters, there's um, token holders that, yeah, there there are multiple personas engaging and working in, in singularity net. And one of the goals that we have in um, this proposal for reputation is that we create reputation elements that are valuable for each of those, um, those per personas differently. That you can say, hey, I need a reputation that helps me as an expert reviewer. Um, and I need a reputation that helps me as a token voter. And that way, so it's not just like one dimension of, of reputation. You can't just rely on one set of data. We're going to have to have different types to use to support the multiple personas that are engaging and active in the community. So. 
that's part of that's a lot of the goal. And I think it is really nice the way that it came out here in people talking about like like folks had noticed, you know, there's the the process in, in deep funding. I don't think anybody was shocked at the pain points that came out of here. Um, we didn't get anything new. But what we're trying to do is like, OK, how can we design a system that can work against all of these spaces and all of these challenges and try to achieve the different goals that we have? So the reason the populations come up is we currently have a disconnect where the token votes on average are quite a bit lower than the reviews and the expert votes. Meaning and that there's fewer people who vote than people? No, no. It's like uh, the reviews center around four stars, which is very roughly like eight on the 10 scale, 775, but the token uh, votes center, depending on the pool, anywhere around five or six, you know, some pools are very high. So yeah, they, but on, on average, either people are confused by the five and 10 scale, or they're different populations, or people interpret, you know, uh, what you know what that vote represents you know mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. so if we or, don't know or, I mean the other thing that I've heard right is um the voting I don't know if you have to have AJIX in order to comment but you we know that your vote only counts if you have AJIX and I think that that might the well, one of the things we heard is that that was unclear there's people who didn't really re realize that and that might be another source of of um that discrepancy you know like it's not just it is different populations who are reviewing and rating versus who are voting um and we don't know we don't know how much of that has to do with you know the work or the confusion or the time burden or the different populations and ideally that's we should be able to use both the UI improvements and the reputation tools to tease that apart. Hey, Walter, can you um, either hear or just like shoot me on like, you know, Discord or Matterboast? Um, I love that. I, I like that you describe that. I will try and take notes, but you have a, a more direct experience of what that problem is. Um, so if you can shoot me a description of that problem, I can incorporate it into our um, Okay, our we'll do. Awesome. Thank you very much. Sweet. So we are coming up on 19 after the hour. And Rafael, I want to make sure I give you time to do any sort of wrapping up or next steps. No, um, no worries. Uh, take your time, no problem. Uh, I can also, also make you a question on these if that's useful. Yeah. Uh, so I think one of the things that is interesting and that could be a concern for me is also the whole part related to the reviewers. Mm -hmm. And maybe two dimensions uh, of concerns. Like one concern is um, how, how can we like make sure, what is the criteria, right, to to define a good review in the sense that are we training reviewers to do that, to, to know what they need to do, also to align goals? Because the truth is, I still feel a little bit that it, there's a personal side to each review. If you think a certain uh, solution or a certain area or industry is important, you're usually giving higher ratings to those kind of products. If it's in an area where maybe you're not familiar or you're not, you haven't identified as important, you are already like mentally um, prepared or set to, to give it a lower rating and you have all kinds of biases uh, as a reviewers and um, how are we eliminating those biases and also assuring that reviewers are really aligned with the mission of Singularity Net so that they review on that scope? And then there's another, but maybe I'll just leave this question. Um, that is a, there is a really good one. Um, the, um, I am looking for it. Um, while you look for that, can I uh, speak on that too? Because we talked about this actually the yeah. um, the first time that we were doing all this. So one of the things that I actually suggested 
was that in terms of the eligibility to submit proposals that everybody has a section that clearly states um, basically, you know, all of the information that you would need to actually understand why that uh, that product would be important maybe for that area. Because some of the proposals did that from this past round. Um, I was one of the expert reviewers and uh, some of them did that, but some of them didn't. Like some of them kind of was like, oh, this is the area, but it didn't really stress, you know, about the area. It didn't tell me more about the, the whatever, like uh, it's ecosystem that it's actually going into. So it would leave, it left me and like my team to be like, well, I don't know how this is going to like work, uh, like even in this uh, community, because they're not explaining it enough. But I said that a part, maybe a part of the eligibility criteria for proposals that we have a section where people have to explain, like if it's a hyper-specific place that they're doing it, that they need to actually detail that. They need to explain as much as possible, like cultural implications or whatever country uh, legislation or whatever that would connect to these things that we can, so we can understand it better besides just explaining the product. Uh, the, so the background basically just needs to be explained more as an eligibility is what I was saying. Um, and that would kind of like help divert bias, but it won't stop it. Um, cause at the end of the day, people are still going to have their bias, but I think it, the more information, the better when it comes to like where these things are going to go. And I think that a lot of proposals were missing that in this last round. Yeah, that's super interesting. Yeah. Lilo, thank you for calling out some of the stuff that we might've, I might've like left and, and not picked up off the floor. Um, and I do remember that point that you were saying is one of the other issues is that often you have found yourself having to like review in domains that you did not feel like you were expert in. Um, the and, and part of that is there was a flood of stuff. Um, but Raphael, maybe it also goes into, you know, we shouldn't have experts do ratings in domains that they think are not important. Right. There's that in another dimension that says, is this topic an important topic for our space? And we should so that we should separate out the dimensions, the rating dimensions on is this, you know, an important problem to solve? And is this proposal likely to solve that problem well? I think that makes a lot of sense. My only concern with that approach is right now is it feels that a lot of the reviewers are also proposers. So if we add the characteristic of having domains, um, it might have it might be hard to find enough enough reviewers to enough review reviewers. a certain proposal because there's not like either the people that are on that domain have a proposal or <laughs> right. they there's not enough people. Uh, yeah, I would say that's my only concern. A and the other part is there related to reviewers is that we we were talking about the level of expertise of a person and how that should influence the reviews or uh, voting weight or etc. Mm -hmm. um, how would you measure the level of expertise just from participation <laughs> in the funding? So I got to say, um, the canonical example of I'm only going to dig in if it's super important was expertise. Um, the that measuring expertise is, is I think, a, a, going to be a hard problem. Um, the, one of the things is, um, we're, one of the lucky things is there's already some conversations going on within deep funding and singularity net about, about that, what defining expertise, expertise in what, which areas do we want to, to measure that in, and then sort of unpacking, how would we measure it? Um, there's some tools out there. You could you think in terms of, um, just attestations and circles of trust, webs of trust. Um, the, who do we, who do we already trust is an expert in this space and how do they connect that? And, um, so there's some interesting ideas out there, but I don't want to unpack that unless expertise comes at, up as one of our high priority elements. If it does, then we'll dig into it, but we'll probably dig into it. Not in, not just us are in Dow, but in collaboration with Jan and, and Rafael Pressa and with Fotrack and, and other folks. Well, does that help answer your question, Rafael? That was is yeah, that your yeah. second question that you yeah. had? Yeah, how yes, do you measure yes. expertise? <laughs> and reliably, uh, like 
you measure it in a way you can actually trust that that person is an expert or even compare it like is this person more of, a, of an expert right. than this one in what domain i think it's very complex because yeah, yeah. i hear that oh walter please go yes. ahead so the point i wanted to make is there are two approaches uh as far as alignment ultimately it's the ability to predict the proposals that will be successfully completed and result in something good right so retrospectively who and who was doing the ratings that had that predictive ability that to me is the singular uh determination but alternatively indeed people have rated on how close people have been uh, to the community consensus uh, that was the dow stack approach and there was incentives to drive uh, to reward uh, people voting in a way that then overall the community will you know would end up voting and so to me this is the difference between uh do you want opinions uh that result in good proposals but may be biased all over the place or do you want to encourage people voting for kind of feel good stuff but that may not end up that valuable or team that ends up not being able to execute yeah yeah i think that that was the the crux that we were we were working with um the and that's why so much of the reputation data that was talked about ends up being driven in the end by what happens in the evaluation phase. Um, people can develop reputation as good reviewers over time, but that has to be tied to the things I rated highly ended up being successful, the things I rated low, but the things is if you rate it low and then it never gets approved, we don't know if you're gonna be wrong. Um, the, that was, so that reliability as a rater is something that I think we need to, it is another area we'd have to unpack very carefully to see how we could reliably measure that. Um, but there was so much stuff that had to do with, um, measuring the successful completion and the impact of the projects that that's really going to be an important area to work on. Because the rest of the reputation tools and sort of rely on the, on that measurement in the end. We're not looking for you know the Keynesian beauty contest here. We don't need somebody to be, get a high reputation for being able to tell what the rest of this SNET community wants and what's going to be popular, right? We want people to say what's going to be successful and, and have an impact on the mission. Awesome. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for spending an entire hour on this um, and all of the great work. It has helped us quite a bit. Um, the We will probably come back with another town hall um, in a few weeks to do some other stuff. Um, the If nothing else, to share out sort of the, the findings that we have and what our next steps are. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andrea, in the name of the community. I think I enjoyed it a lot. I hope other people have enjoyed it to be here, to participate, to help projects come to life. I think that's also a good way we can contribute to make deep funding better. And uh, for everyone else, don't forget, next week we'll have an online meeting, an open meeting for you to meet the circles, governance, what's going on. It will be on Wednesday, the 14th at uh, 2 p.m. UTC. So we'll share it on the socials. And if you can make it, we would love to have it there. And besides that, I just wish you everyone a great day. For anyone watching out there on YouTube, don't forget to check Deep Funding and to come here and join us live. And for all of you that have been here and contributing, a huge thank you. And I hope to see you again on the next town hall. Thank you. Thank well, you. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.